Now, as we discussed in a previous episode, the PlayStation Vita is a seriously hot console right now. And a console that I recommend if anybody is interested to go out and buy right now before it's too late. And to help you out with that, we are going all in. We're going into a deep dive of the PlayStation Vita and what you should be looking for if you're looking to buy it. We're gonna be talking consoles, memory cards, games, and more. We're gonna cover everything. And by the end of this, you are gonna know exactly what you need to start your PlayStation Vita collection. So kick off your shoes and relax your socks. Now, the PlayStation Vita is the superb successor to the PlayStation Portable. And when the PlayStation Vita was announced, there was an incredible amount of hype. PlayStation Vita promised near PlayStation 3 quality graphics in the palm of your hand. And technically, it delivered. It delivered what was at the time the most technically outstanding handheld console ever created. But the PlayStation Vita wasn't without its issues. And those issues were self-inflicted by Sony. Those issues may mean that the PlayStation Vita didn't go on to become the triple A handheld console it was meant to be. But what it does mean is that it turned into a superbly niche and wonderful place for some of the most interesting and unique video game ideas to appear, giving birth to a wonderful world of indie game portable titles, as well as some truly unique and different experiences all the way from Japan. That is why the PlayStation Vita is one of my favorite consoles of all time, and a console that I think any collector should have in their collection, simply for the fact of how unique and niche the library is. So let's first look at the console itself. When it comes to the PlayStation Vita, there are two hardware revisions of the console. The first console is the Generation 1 console, and these were the first that were released. The Generation 1 console comes in a Wi-Fi variant and a 3G variant as well, where the 3G enables you to connect to a mobile data network with the use of a SIM card. On top of that, the Generation 1 system has a superbly stunning OLED screen and boasts between about three to five hours of gameplay on battery. But the downside to the Generation 1 system is that it doesn't contain any onboard memory. In order to use any video games on the PlayStation Vita, you need to have access to storage. And in the Generation 1 systems, the only way you can access the storage is through Sony's proprietary memory cards. Now we will go into that more later on in the episode but what you need to know is if you're going for a generation one console you definitely need to have a memory card the generation one consoles will cost you around about 120 pounds these days and in the us i think that would translate to around about 180 dollars maybe but the second option when it comes to the actual hardware is generation two and this one is my personal favorite now the generation two does technically have a downgrade from the oled screen to an lcd screen there'll be many a debate online as to which which is the better screen. Many people do prefer the more vibrant colors of the OLED, but I personally love the LCD screen. And for everything else that Generation 2 gives you, I think it's worth it. Other than the screen change from OLED to LCD, the Generation 2 of PlayStation Vita comes in lighter and slimmer, which makes the console much easier to hold and much more comfortable in your hands. It also throws in an extra hour of battery life, micro USB, and most importantly, one gigabyte of onboard memory, meaning that technically you don't need to have one of the proprietary PlayStation Vita cards. The other thing to note is that Generation 2 only came in a Wi-Fi flavor. There was no 3G option. Now that's for you to decide if 3G is important. Now something else to note about the consoles for both Generation 1 and Generation 2 is that they both support remote play, which means you can play pretty much most of your PlayStation 4 games streamed to the PlayStation Vita. This is absolutely superb and I've had many a fun time playing Death stranding while sat on the toilet. At the time of the Vita's release, this concept was just so mind-blowing. And even today in the world of the Nintendo Switch, it is still so cool to be able to play and stream your PlayStation 4 games to your Vita. This functionality does have some compatibility with PlayStation 3 games, but when the PlayStation 3 games were being developed, it wasn't part of a requirement for those games. PlayStation 4 games, it was a requirement for them to support remote play. And that's why the most, the vast majority of the PlayStation 4 library will support remote play with your PlayStation Vita, both Generation 1 and Generation 2. Now, something else that the PlayStation Vitas did support, both Generation 1 and Generation 2, was access to the cloud system PS Now. Unfortunately, however, if that is why you're buying a PlayStation Vita, it is not supported anymore. Technically, Sony could enable that in the future, but with what we're seeing about Sony's support of the PlayStation Vita, 
I wouldn't hold my hopes that the fact that we'll be able to see PlayStation Now on a Vita console again. So bear that in mind, if you are buying a PS Vita for cloud streaming, it's no longer available. But in all honesty, like we said at the beginning of this episode, the strength of the Vita is in its unique and fantastic video game library, which we will get onto in a bit. Now there is one other flavor of PlayStation Vita that comes, and that is the PlayStation TV. Now, this one is a bit of an oddity because it's not handheld and it's not portable. The PlayStation TV was a little device that you could connect to your TV. And what it enabled you to do was to be able to play or at least download and stream PlayStation Vita games onto your TV using a DualShock 4 controller. Now, the problem with the PlayStation TV is that it didn't come with the touch screen or the rear touch pad that the PlayStation Vita had, which meant that a lot of games that use those functionality are not compatible on the PlayStation. TV. If you are looking at getting into PlayStation Vita collecting, I don't recommend you go down the PlayStation TV route. I mean, you can if you want to, but there's a lot of limitations when it comes to the PlayStation TV, which is why it was a system that didn't really sell well in North America and Europe. But for the sakes of being a complete buying guide, it is important to refer to the PlayStation TV so you know all the options that you have. Now, the next thing to discuss, and Potentially one of the most important things about the PlayStation Vita are the memory cards. The memory cards are essential, are crucial to a PlayStation Vita, unfortunately so. And I say unfortunately so because that is what I believe and many people believe was the downfall of the PlayStation Vita. Sony opted to go with a proprietary system, meaning that you couldn't just buy any kind of SD card online and use it in your PlayStation Vita. You had to buy a very specific card designed by Sony, which meant the price was extortionate. Now these memory cards came in the variety of either 4 gigabyte, 8, 16, 32 or 64 gigabytes. And again, unfortunately, to get one of these cards today, you're still going to be paying around about the price you would have paid on the release of the PlayStation Vita, which means that for a 16 gigabyte PlayStation Vita memory card, you're going to be paying probably three to four times the amount you'd pay for a standard 16 gigabyte SD card. Now that can put a lot of people off, but I don't think it should be a deterrent to collecting for the PlayStation Vita. And let me tell you why. Yes, you are going to need to have one of these memory cards if you're gonna play PlayStation Vita games. Now, if you go down the generation two route, you will have one gigabyte of onboard memory, but that one gigabyte is not going to be enough to cover all of the games in the library. Some games are gonna require more space than that. So at a very minimum, you're gonna need a four gigabyte memory card. Now, as this has always been the case for PlayStation Vitas, it pretty much means that many PlayStation Vitas that sell on the market today come with a memory card. So that should be included in the price that you're looking at. Now, generation two PlayStation PlayStation Vitas go for around about 100 to 110 pounds and I think that's around about 150 dollar mark. If you do decide to go out and buy a memory card then I don't recommend going for a 64 gigabyte or even 32 or even 16 gigabyte option. I just don't think they are necessary. Yes it does technically mean you can hold more installed games on the console at any one point in time but I don't think you need to do that with the PlayStation Vita. Games install onto the Vita so quickly that it's not like on a PlayStation 3 where you're sitting there for about a good 20 minutes waiting for it to install and then another half an hour waiting for things to download. Within a few minutes your game can be installed on the PlayStation Vita and you can be away playing which means it's not a big deal to have to remove games. On top of that if you were thinking of buying the biggest memory cards then you could have your whole library on the console then you might want to think again because there is an actual limit of having 500 games and applications on the PlayStation Vita at any one point in time. This means that even if you have have more memory on your card, you still won't be able to put more than 500 applications on there. So in order to solve this issue, there is one thing I recommend that anybody that has a PlayStation Vita does. Go ahead and download a copy of QCMA to your laptop or to your PC. This is essentially a third party version of the content manager for PlayStation Vita. And what it is, is it's a management system that sits on your PC or laptop that enables you to download your library to your PC, essentially backing up your PlayStation Vita. QCMA is incredibly lightweight, it's free, and it's so easy to use. Once QCMA is loaded and your PS Vita is connected to your PC, all you need to do is go into content manager 
and you can copy across from your PlayStation Vita to your PC and back again. And this is what I do. I do personally have a 16 gigabyte memory card and a four gigabyte memory card, but honestly, I only use one of them because at any one point in time, I know that I'm really only gonna be playing about three or four games on the console. And so what I do when I'm ready, I'll remove ones I don't wanna play and I'll put on the ones that I do wanna play. And literally in a matter of minutes, I have the games on the console that I need. No need for a 64 gigabyte memory card, as appealing as that might be. So personally, that is my recommendation. Don't go more than a 16 gigabyte memory card and download yourself a copy of QCMA. That way, the memory card doesn't have to be a hindrance to your PlayStation Vita. And on top of that, it is really good practice to back up all of your games, especially if you're gonna be downloading some games from the PlayStation Vita store while it's still around. Get them backed up on your PC, so you don't have to worry about when the store closes. So you've got your PlayStation Vita, you've got yourself a memory card, and you've downloaded QCMA. Now let's talk about some games. The PlayStation Vita game library, like I said at the beginning, is one of the most beautiful and unique game libraries around. What started off as a triple A game and console moved over to more obscure niche and indie game titles, meaning that the game library ranges from triple A titles to some of the most obscure games you're ever gonna see. And for that reason, there's something for pretty much everybody. Now in a previous episode, we discussed how hot the PlayStation Vita is and how quickly games Games are being bought up and the prices are increasing. However, if you're quick off the bat and you start your PlayStation Vita collected sooner than later, there are still plenty of cheap and phenomenal games you can get for your library. Now, the games that I'm about to list range from exclusives on the PS Vita to games that are just damn right impressive to be in the palm of your hand. And all of these games currently go for less than £20. Now, first off, we have Little Big Planet, an absolutely fantastic platforming game, and a game which in in many ways rivals the home console counterpart. Next up we have Tearaway, an absolutely fantastic and unique video game experience that makes the most out of the PlayStation Vita hardware. This was as much a technical showcase of the PlayStation Vita as it was a superb game to play. You can get this on the PlayStation 4 but it in no way rivals the version that you're going to be playing on the PlayStation Vita because this game was designed for the PlayStation Vita. Another absolutely technical masterpiece is Uncharted charted golden abyss a game which again uses so many of the playstation vita's functionality to its best and a game which can only be played on the playstation vita definitely one to not be missed continuing on with the big names we've got kill zone mercenary a game that is absolutely superb and what was at the time the best first person shooter you could get on any portable system next up we have batman arkham origins black gate a really unique and interesting twist on the arkham games you can get this game on the nintendo DS but it is definitely one you should be getting for your PlayStation Vita because with the extra technical power of the PlayStation Vita it just makes this game so much better. Another absolutely superb game and one of my favorites on the console is Gravity Rush. A game so good that it ended up getting a remake on the PlayStation 4. But again there's something about this game there's something so niche interesting and unique about this game that it just feels right it feels at home on the PlayStation Vita and it is a game you should definitely be adding to your PS Vita library. Now this one does break the £20 mark, which then brings us on to some other games now. If you like racing games, the PS Vita has some absolutely stunning options. Need for Speed Most Wanted is a fantastic example of how you take a console game and put it into a handheld portable system. An absolutely brilliant racing game and one of the cheaper games on the system as well, and one you will find easily. Next up is Sonic All-Stars Racing. If you like that kind of kart racing, Mario Kart style, Sonic All-Stars Racing is another Another superb game and one that has made many a hidden gem list as well. If you like kart racing, you like that whole Mario Kart style, this one is definitely up your street. Superb, addictive, adrenaline inducing fun, Sonic All-Stars Racing is just brilliant. Another amazing racing game on the PS Vita is Ridge Racer. This game is just stunning to look at and so much fun. And one of the most exhilarating racing experience on the PlayStation Vita you can get. Now if you like futuristic races, Wipeout 2048 is absolutely brilliant and a game that really brought the Wipeout series back to its former glory. Another fantastic AAA title is Borderlands 2. Now people compared this to the home console and noticed that there were areas where it was lacking but honestly having played this game this game hooks you as much as Borderlands 2 on the console does. It's so amazing that this game could exist on the PlayStation Vita at the time and to this day it is so much fun to play. The graphics look stunning and the gameplay is just on point. Moving 
moving on to fighting games and there's Mortal Kombat Complete Edition. Again, another fantastic example of how the home console games can transition so well to the PlayStation Vita. Mortal Kombat is absolutely superb and just as brutal in the palm of your hand as it is on your TV screen. Now, another fantastic fighting game to look out for and one that I believe is gonna rise in price if the previous games were anything to go by is Marvel vs. Capcom 3. The amount of characters, the look and the speed of this game is just phenomenal and definitely a game to have in your collection if you like fighting games. Now if you like more of your RPG tactics kind of games then Disgaea 3 and 4 are great options with my preference being towards Disgaea 4. Now these games are more of an acquired taste but they are definitely an indication of some of the more unique video game experiences you can get on the PS Vita. Disgaea is by no means a new name for the Vita but it is a great example of how well these games play in the palm of your hand. Now as we start to talk about some of the more pricey games but still fantastic games you should try to get in your collection let's first look at some of the trilogies and collections and, and these ones surprise me to be honest we have the jack and daxter trilogy the ratchet and clank trilogy the sly cooper trilogy the god of war hd collection and the metal gear solid hd collection now these are big names in the world of video games however on the playstation vita these are quite difficult games to find and these are games that are rising in price quite quickly all of these games in these collections are superb games from the history of PlayStation and their transition to the Vita has been absolutely fantastic. Being able to experience these games in the palm of your hand is some of the best video game experiences I've ever had. My most recent playthrough of Metal Gear Solid 2 on the PlayStation Vita was just phenomenal and the Sly Cooper trilogy is a trilogy I was finally able to experience thanks to the PlayStation Vita having missed it on the PlayStation 2. But like I said if you want to get these in physical format they can be a little bit pricier and I do believe it's something to do with the fact that I think a lot of people that bought those games bought the digital versions of them. So the physical copies are a little bit harder to find these days. They're not extortionate, but they're definitely worth checking out and trying to find and get into your collection before they become too pricey. Now, as we start to delve deeper into the library of the PlayStation Vita, we start to see some more unique games and some pricier games as well. Let's talk about first some of the visual novels you can get on the system. To list all the visual novels available, we'd be here for a long time but there are three collections that stand out head and shoulders above the rest. First off is Movelove and Movelove Alternative. These are some really unique and interesting visual novels but they are really difficult to find and quite pricey. Next up is the Danganronpa trilogy. The Danganronpa trilogy is highly regarded as one of the best visual novels ever, one of the best experiences on the PlayStation Vita. Now these ones are a bit easier to find than the Movelove games but again they are starting to go up in price a little bit more. Finally we have the Zero Escape trilogy which can be found in the nonary games and zero time dilemma again these are highly regarded as one of the best experiences on the playstation vita alongside the danganronpa series as some of the most unique games on the system but once again these are easier to find than love love but they are going up in price and they are going to be more and more difficult to find if you want to add them into your collection now if you like your rpgs then the ps vita definitely has you sorted and one of the best series on the vita is the ease selection we have ease E's Origins, E's Memories of Celsetta, and my personal favourite, E's 8, The Lacrimosa of Dana. Now don't let those crazy names put you off because I'm not the biggest JRPG aficionado. I like the idea of those games, but I very rarely delve deep into them. And I know when you hear some of these titles, it can be overwhelming. But if you are going to pick one to jump into, I thoroughly recommend you check out EZ, which is an absolutely stunning example on the PlayStation Vita and has some absolutely fantastic and intense fight mechanics as well. It'll have you traveling around the most beautiful and wonderful island, trying to figure out what is going on as you're hacking and slashing your way through enemies. As well as the E series, there is also the Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2. Now I've not personally played these yet but I've heard nothing but good things about them. And having Trails of Cold Steel 1 in my collection they are definite games I will be getting around to. Next up if you know of Vanillaware then the chances are you like them. And the PS Vita has some fantastic Vanillaware titles to check out as well including Dragon's Crown, Odin Sphere Left Riser and Muramasa. Now these games range in terms of how difficult they can be found and what the cost is as well. Dragon's Crown is not too difficult 
difficult to find and it's not too expensive. Odin Sphere is a bit more expensive and a bit more difficult and Muramasa is just damn right near impossible for me to find. But either way, these are fantastic games to get in your collection if you can get them. And as we go higher up the price of the PlayStation Vita video game library, we come towards Silent Hill Book of Memories. A very unique game in the world of Silent Hill. A top-down dungeon crawler if you like. Silent Hill Book of Memories didn't sell that well to start with, which means now it's starting to command a really high price. But like any Silent Hill game out there, it's always worth having it in your collection. And because it is such a different experience than all the other Silent Hill games, and one that can only be played on the PlayStation Vita, it is definitely worth worth getting in your library if you're willing to spend the price of around about £90. And now finally, if you can find it anywhere. If you can find it, tell me how much it costs because I don't even know how much this game costs anymore. Arno Surge Plus. Now I have the Japanese version of this, I have the PlayStation 3 version of this, and I do have the digital version on the PlayStation Vita which sells for around about £40. But trying to find that physical copy of Arno Surge Plus is the unicorn of the PlayStation Vita world. If you find this game and you're willing to pay for it, get it, because I guarantee you, this is gonna be one of the hardest games to find on any console in the future. So there you have it. That is everything you need to know to start your PlayStation Vita collection. Console, memory card, QCMA, and a sweet selection of video games. If you are on the fence about collecting for the PlayStation Vita, I definitely recommend you go for it now. Even if it turns out to be a console you're not interested in later on down the line, you will have no problems getting rid of the console. These are gonna be sellers. These are gonna be hot sellers in the future, just like the Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, and the Nintendo Wii U is now. And I would go so far as to say, I genuinely believe the PlayStation Vita will surpass those consoles in the eyes of collectors. Because what was at the time the most groundbreaking handheld ever created, turned out to be what is potentially Sony's last ever handheld created. And that makes it an incredibly special console. Like I said, I am right now actively and aggressively collecting for the PlayStation Vita. I wanna fill out my library and get those games in there that I've been after for a while as quick as possible. And because of that, I'll be covering a lot more on the channel about the PlayStation Vita. And upcoming will be some PlayStation Vita pickups, which you won't wanna miss out on some of those because there's some heavy hitters coming this way. On top of that, I'll also be doing episodes in the future on tips on which are the hottest games to focus on and which are the best games to try and get now before the prices absolutely skyrocket. If you're interested in that, then hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell because you do not want to miss when that comes out. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time.